Hi, welcome to Design Spark Ask the Expert. Today I'll be talking to Stuart Merkel from Maxim Integrated. Hi, Stuart. Would you like to say hello to Design Spark? Hi, how are you doing today? Great, we're doing good. So we're going to be talking about the DS28 E18. Um, so it's a, an IC2 bridge sensor controlled by two wires from a master. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about the product first? Um, yeah, sure. This is a new product for us and it is basically a one wire to I2C SPI bridge device. And this particular bridge device, it, it, what it does is it elim like I squared C requires four wires and uh, SPI requires six wires. And I mean that because it needs, they need for I squared C, you need a ground you need a VCC and then you need a clock and you need your SDA signal. And then for SPY, you have your MISO, MOSI, and then you have uh, chip select and a clock signal as well. And then you need ground and VCC. So this eliminates that that's down to two wires. So just an yeah. outstanding product that way. So you, you also supply a kit with um, 2P mod temperature sensors. Um, can you use the kit with any standard PMOD or does it have to be uh, SPI or I squared C? Uh, you can use it with any standard SPI PMOD that you want out there. But for uh, I squared C, um, you, there is a little bit of remapping that you would have to do. And that's because we also bring out the one wire next to the ground pin on the PMOD connection. Okay. So, so just in terms of um, what's the furthest distance you've been able to get reliable communication you know for each data uh, transmission rate for example well in standard speed which is 11 kilobits per second we've been able to have reliable communication at 100 meters with 10 nodes and then for overdrive speed which is 90 kilobits per second we've had a reliable uh, communication uh, at distance of 10 uh, you know with just these 10 meters and uh, three nodes but if you want to customize it, you can get it to work much longer distances. So for instance, in standard speed, you could go up to 200 meters. If you do a little bit of uh, customizing of the timing and you have less nodes on the one wire bus. So yeah. There's some trade offs there. OK, and, and that's is that affected with the, the, the data rates as well, the transmission? Uh, yeah, the, the data rates could become a little bit slower if you have to change the timing for the standard speed. So, okay, I guess our users will be interested to know of um, some real life user cases. Is there, is there anything you could share about this, or are there any particular ones that stand out for you? Sure. In the in the medical field, one of the neat things that we have is uh, it's been used to measure somebody's breathing up and down. And it's done. That's done by connected to a patient monitor, and that, and the DS28 E18 is is connected to an I squared C accelerometer that's on someone's chest, and it, the accelerometer, you know, can detect the chest going up and down, and that's yeah. relayed back to the patient monitor. So just a great little application. So that's that's one. Um, a few others we have is we've we've done. Uh, building automation systems that it's been in. So you could imagine these great buildings that want to be environmentally friendly, you know. Yeah. And we've been able to uh, convert ADCs uh, to uh, across the one wire uh, using the DS28 E18 to take those analog measurements you need to for such a situation, as well as any other remote sensors in that building. So. Uh, and that, so that's another one. And then the last one I, I could think of off the top of my head is there's one that's used in the retail food environment. And this is a pretty neat one because it, this is used in the drive through areas. They have these headsets, kind of like these headsets, and except they have buttons on one side and the other side, they just have one earphone and a mic. And there's a Kodak that sits in here connected to a DS28 E18. And on this side, the, the buttons control the settings that's over here. And so they just have a one wire that goes across the, the headset. And this right. this has worked out great for us, just that little product. So, yeah. yeah. 
they're, they're three really interesting examples. I'll be perfectly honest with you. The, the first one and, and the, the third one, I, I wasn't expecting that at all. So, uh, sure. yeah, thanks for sharing that. Um, in terms of connecting slaves, I squared C slaves, uh, can you connect? How many can you connect to the uh, DS28 um, uh, E18 bus, for example? So the DS28 E18 acts faster, so you can connect, I mean, as many I squared C slaves as you would like, but your your only limitation there is the uh, power that's available because you only have 10 milliamps that, that can uh, source all those I squared C slaves. So. Yeah. So yeah, it's just it's dependent on the overall power consumption then. Yeah, in that case, yeah. Yeah. So can you um, can an I squared C slave uh, with the same I squared C address be on the same one wire bus? Yeah, it can. That's that's this is a great thing. How many times have you you're down to only two pins, and your your micro uh, wants to talk to three temperature sensors, but they're all I squared C slaves with the same address so you have all this contention you yeah. know because you you can't connect them to that bus well with ds28 e18 you can eliminate that because each ds28 e18 has its own unique uh identification that can be placed on the bus and then connected to each one of those slaves so you, you just use three ds28 e18s for example connected to three i score c slaves so cool yeah so plenty of flexibility there then yeah Oh yeah, this is this is very helpful for a lot of customers we found. So, so if we were to um, talk about wire, what what type of what wire would you recommend? You know, for uh, a one wire bus, for example. Uh, sure. So we recommend using unshielded twisted pair with the characteristics that are uh, similar to Cat 5e. And Cat 5e uh, usually has capacitance of about 52 picofarads per meter. So it keeps the capacitance down on the one wire bus and it can go for a long distance with a great twist to it. So. OK, the, we, meant, we talked about current just a minute ago, but does the um, DS28 E18 source 10 milliamps all the time to the I squared C and SPI slaves? Uh, no, it, it only sources it when it's needed. So those the way it works is that uh, it will just deliver the current to those sensors when they need to be powered up and take that measurement. Then it shuts those sensors down again and then transfers yeah. those bytes back over to the host across the okay. one-wire bus. So yeah. That's quite quite efficient then, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so it's it's efficient, but if you need current all the time, you, you have to think about it a little bit more. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the things that always help is reference design. So I'm just interested uh, from Maxim's point of view in terms of reference designs, what you what you offer. Yeah, so we, we have uh, C demos available for DS28 E18. And these C demos uh, are made for ARM, which is some of the most common processors out there. As well, we have a, a reference design called the MaxRev Des 9000. And this MaxRev Des 9000 uh, includes several reference sensors. One is a, a UV light sensor, humidity sensor, and as well an I squared C accelerometer example. So you can you can run with those and get started uh, even quicker by looking at that reference design. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, always helpful for engineers to to look at reference designs, helping them to get uh, get moving quickly. One of the things I just want to talk about in terms of mixing the the SPI and the I2, I, I squared C slaves. Uh, are you, can you do that on the same one wire bus? Yeah, you can because the the since the DS28 E18, uh, you can have several of them on the one wire bus. You can you, therefore you can mix SPI and I squared C slaves on that bus. So very handy tool if you have sensors of with different types of interfaces. Yeah, so. absolutely. So a lot more flexibility there as well. And I think one of our our bloggers on DesignSpark actually mentions this about the product as, as well. So we can put a link to that below. There's a another piece of content that a blogger has done independently on this. Um, just for one wire, what, what's the best use case for one wire? Uh, the best use case for, for one wire, it, I mean, the, the, what's great about it is it 
it can be used at these longer distances and it, it is lower bandwidth so you have to uh, consider that when you're thinking about it so the it's best for these remote sensors that only have a few bytes that are passing through you know every second or so but not not high bandwidth applications you can't do any high bandwidth type of applications on this so yeah but but i'll mention something about this ds28 e18 it has a uh, sequencer in it and because of that you preload all the i squared c or spi commands that are going to talk to that sensor and then when you, you you just have it you give a command say run and it runs all these all these commands to the sensor and this collects just the data you need just a few bytes so you're only passing just the bytes you need back over to your your host system so because of that you don't need a, a high bandwidth situation all right got you okay so as i mentioned earlier you know we, we had a blogger looking at this he was looking at the evaluation kit for the ds28 a18 but in, in terms of um, long-term support for the device itself what what is it that uh, maxim also offer is there any you know place that we can send users to to get support or is, is there plenty of information out there on your sites yeah so you can come right to our our, our maxim integrated site and we have technical support there that you can uh, ask any question you want. We got a great team that's available to to help you uh, with reference designs or any technical questions you may have about the device. Um, as well, we expect this you know these parts to be around an awful long time because they're they're brand new. So, and we see them being designed in, in a lot of places. So, great. Stuart, it's been great talking to you today. I thank you for your time today, and I hope we talk again real soon. Sure, sounds great. Great to be with you today.